Welcome back to our second lesson for Weather Education Week. Today we're talking about something that weather and baseball have in common. Look at what you see in the sky. Clouds are moving. The wind is blowing the flag. Rain is falling, possibly snow at times. There are always things moving in the atmosphere. It's never at rest. Now look at baseball. The pitcher throws a ball. The batter swings the bat and hits the ball into play. There's movement all over the field as the players try to get the ball and get the player out before he can score. Well, as it turns out, there are rules to motion, whether they're in the weather or on the baseball field. And there's a guy that figured all this out many hundreds of years ago, more than 300 years ago. So unfortunately, he never got to see a baseball game. His name was Isaac Newton and he came up with his three laws of motion. Newton's first law of motion. Things at rest, stay at rest. Things in motion, stay in motion. Both are true unless acted upon by an outside force. All right, that sounds complicated, but let's break it down. Check out this baseball on the ground. It's at rest, and it's still at rest. Okay, things that are at rest tend to stay at rest. So far, so good. But what about things in motion, staying in motion? Let me throw this ball and see what happens. See if it stays in motion. There it goes, there it goes. Oh, oh. All right, well, it was in motion for a while, but then it stopped. Oh, the other part of that first law. Things are at rest or in motion until acted upon by another force. Can you think of a force or two? that may have stopped that ball from moving? I can. First, it was flying through the air. It met with resistance and the air was slowing it down. That was force number one. And then gravity pulled it back down to the ground. So it fell out of the ground and stopped. All right, we've verified the first law of motion. On to number two, Newton's second law of motion. To move a mass, you need a force. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay, the second law sounds complicated too, but let's break it down in baseball terms. All it's saying is that in order to hit a mass, like a baseball, baseball has mass, it has stuff in it, you need to use a force. In baseball, you use a bat. And that second law, all it's saying is that if you use more force, you'll get more acceleration and the ball will go farther. For example, if I use just a little bit of force, ball doesn't go all that far just past the pitcher's mound. All right, let's try that again. Got the same baseball, so the mass is the same, but this time I'll take a bigger swing. I'll use more force. Let's see if we get more acceleration. Whoa, look at that. That's at least a base hit. So what did we just learn? If you use more force against a mass, in this case a baseball, you get more acceleration. But what happens if we use the same amount of force but use a ball that's much more massive than a baseball. Like this 10 pound workout ball. Let's see what happens. This time I'll force the ball into the air using my arm and then try to use the same force with the more massive workout ball. Here we go. Not my best throw, but it's got some good distance. It's in the outfield. Now let me apply the same amount of pressure and throw this 10 pound workout ball. That didn't go nearly as far. It has more mass, so I got less acceleration. Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. All right, let's break down this third law. For example, if someone throws me a ball, the ball has force, but I push back with the mitt and it brings the ball to a stop. It's an equal and opposite reaction. Here's another example. All right, here I am on first base, getting ready to run to second base. And in order to do that, I'm going to push off against first base with my foot. But as I push against the base, the base is actually pushing against my foot. And as I push to the base, it's going to send me running in the other direction, giving me a head start. It's an opposite and equal reaction. Here's another example with my friend, the Philly Fanatic. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Whoa. Did you see that? Let's try that again. 
two forces pushing against each other. You push back, I push back. My belly's a little bigger than yours. So why is it important to know these three laws of motion? Well, as it turns out, if you know the laws of motion, you can predict motion. In baseball, an outfielder sees a fly ball coming. He knows the air is going to slow it down, and gravity brings it back down to the ground. He can get in just the right position to catch the ball. In weather, if you can predict the motion, you can predict the weather. It's the basis of meteorology. And we have Isaac Newton to thank. I hope you've enjoyed learning about Newton's laws of motion. We've got another great lesson for you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. NBC 10 First Alert meteorologist Brittany Shipp will teach you all about lightning. You'll be able to see it on NBC10.com or on the NBC10 app.